about if we talk a little bit about the Steelers O line and who better to help us break it down because there are a number of questions other than Craig Woofley. Hello, oh, we brought you up on roll. the set. Yes, <laughs> we got you roll. in the shade Man. under the tent. There's usually a, a fan for labs, but we forgot it today. You know, that's okay. <laughs> just being in the shade was just nice because that was hot out there. It was very no hot question. out there. All right. I want to talk about maybe the hot position for the offensive line, the right tackle position. How do you th see things shaking out there? You know, I really overall, as I look at it, I, I look at it and I see uh, Matt Filer's playing like he owns it. Chooks uh, Okafor is playing like he wants it. Um, Gerald uh, Hawkins. Hawk is looking like a little like he's unsure of what he's doing. He's not he's not playing with great reckless abandon and the combination of ferocity that you want to see right now, which to me in my mind means he's not quite sure of some of some of his technical work. Zach Banner has just got to play with continued focus. He's one of these guys that he two, three plays in a row can be a little bit of a problem for him. For instance, we saw a nice drop back pass yesterday. Um, had a guy come around the corner and beat him, and, and it shouldn't be. He had his feet together, he was high, had his hands withdrawn, and you could see he was kind of honked off. So the next play was the exact, almost the exact same play, only he takes this guy and puts him in the crowd. Then he goes in after the crowd and gets him. <laughs> now, I like that. That's called that finishing. That's in your wheelhouse. Exactly. That's the way you finish it. That's old school. Now, the problem is, Zach, you can't wait for two plays to get it done. you got to get it done the first time out. He's made great strides. Great progress, and Chooks Okafor is another guy. Um, this guy here, he's got technique problems. He's got to get his hands and, and, and everything else timed up. But man, he's got the ham hocks, and he comes off the ball and he gets after you. All right, now their position coach, Sean Surrett, is not new to them, but he is in a new role this year as the head guy leading that room. Uh, you know Sean well. What have you yeah. seen from him in terms of teaching them on the field, but also maybe what they're doing in the classroom? We're watching a man become comfortable in his own skin. He's around a lot of the veteran players, guys who have been munchacked out. They are, yeah, the <laughs> process of the, the, the munchification. Yeah. You know, that whole teaching process and model of what Mike Man Munchak does. Now, the thing about it is Sean is, is now finally able to take his voice and let it be heard. And he's been respectfully in the, in the background for the last five years with Munch, three years with Sean Kugler before that. Let me say this, Sweet Beat, which is his nickname, yes. he knows what he's doing, okay? okay? He understands, and he is now just taking over the reins and doing it in his personality and style. He can't be Mike Munchak. Nobody can be Mike Munchak but Mike Munchak. But he can take the teaching tools that he learned from the great one, Mike, and be able to apply them and put his personality to it. One of the beautiful things that I think he learned about and from Mike Munchak is don't add to the chaos when guys come off the field. You come off the field, you might be a little heated over something that didn't work, mm -hmm. you know, and, and so every, it's really like, calm down. Let's just get the picture and get the story of what happened. Other guys, they kind of become, coaches become combative with you the moment you get off the field. That ain't helping it, okay? So I would see with, with Sean Surratt, he's been around, he knows what's going on. He's got veteran guys who right now understand him and know him. All right, we had a chance today to hear from offensive lineman Al Villanueva prior to practice talking a number of things. As you know, Al is one of those awesome interviews. But here's a clip of him talking about number seven, Ben Roethlisberger. I think Ben has always been a, an amazing player to, to play for uh, because he transmits a lot of that competitive edge uh, to other players. You don't know if he should be competitive all the time. And then when you play with Ben, you realize that you have to be competitive all the time about all aspects of your football career, and uh, and that's that's contagious. So um, he's been a uh, you know for year 14. I think he told us that he's been here for longer than a year uh, here at Latrobe. For him to have this determination to come out of practice every day and compete seven shots, he's done seven shots thousands of times, but come out seven shots, come out during the, during all the periods and, and give the best that he can uh, is something that, that is contagious to us younger guys that, that are that are following his lead. All right, well, if not that you would disagree with an offensive lineman, because I don't think you a, can do a that. A fellow but. brother, come on. <laughs> All right, I guess what makes what Al Villanueva said there true? Well, first of all, the source in which it comes from, that's Al. Uh, Al understands leadership, not just on the field, but in fields of combat. Okay, real life and death situations. He understands what real leadership is about. So when he speaks about the leadership skills of Ben Roethlisberger, we're not getting it from some guy who's, you know, I have a nice idea of what leadership is. No, this is a guy who lived it, understood it, taught it, and lived it out in a, in a combat atmosphere, in a combat arena. So when he talks about Ben, he's talking from experience. So for Ben to come out now and really 
grab the reins and be a little more vocal and be that guy that you want him to be. It's just the process and the culmination of all the great years of play that he's had, and it's now kind of emanating and flowing from him, from his true self, his true north, if you will. And so I think that's a great compliment coming from, from Al, mm -hmm. and I think it's just Ben becoming Ben and being Ben. All right, I have a trivia question for uh -oh. you. What is tomorrow? Oh, Gadzooks, you know, training camp is timeless, okay? <laughs> the thing you have to understand, once you open the gates here in, in training camp, it's timeless, so you get lost. Do you want me to give you a clue? Uh, yes. Tomorrow's Friday. Okay. Uh, good, it's Friday. <laughs> Friday night lights, oh, love, that's night right. practice. You told me this before, kids. Oh my goodness. <laughs> it's okay. We'll make sure you get on the bus so that you get over there. Thank all right. You. We, Thank we won't you. leave you behind. You can understand now when my wife looks at me with those eyes like, really? <laughs> I didn't think it was that's a hard it. one. I'm sorry. I, I had to. All right. Well, let's hear uh, from number 97, Cam Hayward, wow. earlier today talking about riding the school buses, going to a high school stadium, and going under the lights. <laughs> I think it's fun. Um, you know, it brings me back to high school. Uh, I get to, you know, play in front of the lights again, and um, we do it for our fans, and we get to have some fun with them. Um, you know, I've always looked forward to that day, uh, and usually guys like to, to show out during that time as well. All right, well, uh, here's all the information. We'll slip a copy of this uh, under your door so you have it as well. But Friday Night Lights, an annual tradition uh, that started back during when Coach Cower was here. But the night practice taking place at Latrobe Memorial Stadium. Steelers Fest taking place from 12 to 6. But then at Latrobe Memorial Stadium, those gates open at 5. Make sure you get those tickets. Practice starts at 7 o'clock, but the best part probably, at least for the fans, Wolf, is that autograph session. Yes. It takes place the 15 minutes prior to practice starting. As soon as those guys get off the school buses, they are handed Sharpies. They line the fences. Uh, just an awesome thing to really see giving back to the Latrobe community for hosting us uh, for like three, four weeks up here. And then Steelers Live, a special time tomorrow coming to you from 720. We will be inside Latrobe Memorial Stadium. So uh, a lot to look forward to. Maybe sleep in a little bit. Again, we'll remind you, Wolf. I got you. I apologize. I'm <laughs> I'm pitiful. Uh, it's okay. The days run together here. I will say this. I was there for the first two Friday okay. Night Lights. I actually played. And I didn't forget I was there. <laughs> well, that's good. We'll make sure you're there for tomorrow. Too. Thank you so much. All right. Well, thanks as always for your time talking a little O-line. Don't forget, practice is just starting to wrap up here at St. Vincent College. Mike Tomlin's post-practice press conference coming your way right here. Have a great night, everybody. We'll see you tomorrow.